Apple just released iOS 26.1. It includes a bunch of new features and refinements, and I'm gonna walk you through all of it in this video. Let's get started. But real quick, if you wanna keep up to date with all the latest Apple news and reviews, hit that subscribe button. So iOS 26.1 is the first kind of major release following the launch of iOS 26. Apple did issue a small 26.0.1 update that fixed a few things specifically on like all of the new iPhones that are out there, but 26.1 is the first one that kind of has a few new features. There's a few prominent features and then a ton of refinements to the UI, and I'm gonna walk you through all of them and compare them to the release of iOS 26. So I have my phone all the way loaded up, my iPhone 17 Pro. It was just over eight gigs for my model. Your mileage may vary depending on yours and what version you're coming from. So let's go ahead and walk through everything new with 26.1. Starting out with something that people probably didn't expect to happen. Apple's giving us more control over liquid glass. By going into settings, then venturing down to display and brightness, there is now this new field here for liquid glass. When we tap into this, there's an option there for clear and an option for tinted. So clear is your usual liquid glass UI that you'd see everywhere, like it's really prominent, you know, in photos. You can see how clear all these overlays are as they're kind of just reacting to what's around them. But if we go here, switch it to tinted and then go back to photos, you can see now these are tinted much more. So they have a lot more contrast with their background. They are overall easier to see. So Apple is giving us an option. It is not like a full slider to adjust maybe how much tint to how much clear we're getting, but it is at least something. And you can see a little demo over here, just here in the settings app. I think this is really helpful for the people who do not like liquid, like liquid glass and don't want to go you know, into accessibility mode and set it up that way. So this is a good kind of middle ground option. Let's go back to our home screen we now have a new branding for Apple TV. It starts off with a new icon. It's much more colorful there. I don't know if you can tell out because it is small here, but on things like Apple TV, it is much more prominent. When we go into the app itself, the icon here, because this is just before the release, it still says Apple TV Plus, but Apple is fully rebranding Apple TV Plus to just Apple TV. They say it's a vibrant new brand refresh, Hopefully, um, I believe all this will get changed kind of server side. So instead of saying watching on Apple TV Plus, it's going to switch just to Apple TV following this actual update being pushed out. But yeah, we'll see if there's any other changes to the design. But the main thing is new icon and then everything is switching to just Apple TV instead of Apple TV Plus. Here's something else I never thought Apple would do. So if we lock our phone, typically what you do is you swipe to the side to open up the camera. But now with this latest update, if we go into settings and then go down to camera, there is a new option that allows us to toggle off the actual swipe on the lock screen. So if I turn this back on and I go back to the lock screen here, I can swipe this way to jump into the camera. I personally found that very annoying because I was constantly doing that just holding my phone. So this has been such a long time coming for me. I am extremely excited that Apple is now giving us that option to turn that off. You no longer have to do that. We have so many options already. I mean, you can be using the little buttons here. You can use the camera control. You can use your action button. There's so many options. I think the swiping to get to the camera was always obnoxious. Let me know down below how you think it is easiest to get into the camera. Which way do you use? Do you swipe, do you use the app, action button, camera control, a shortcut, anything else? Make sure you vote and let me know down below in the comments to see where everyone stands. The battery and charging tech on the new iPhone 17 line is pretty impressive. Apple upped the wire charging to yield about a 50% charge in only 20 minutes using a 40 watt or higher charger. It, of course, announced its own first party accessories that it sells for a premium, like the 40 watt dynamic power adapter and the iPhone Air MagSafe battery. What I've been recommending though, is this tiny 45 watt Anchor Nano charger. It's smaller than Apple's and still will fast charge your iPhone. I love how small it is for travel while also being more affordable than Apple's. I'm also obsessed with the Anchor Nano Power Bank. It is 
as thin as Apple's, but it works with all the MagSafe iPhone models, not just iPhone Air. With 15 watts of wireless output, it charges faster than I can finish off my day's third cold brew. And with 5,000 milliamp hours of capacity, no matter how much content I am creating, games I'm playing, or YouTube I'm watching, I can make it through the day. That makes Apple not only more expensive, but it is slower at 12 watts instead of 15, and has only around 3,000 million hours of capacity instead of 5,000 compared to this Anchor model. Grab both of these new accessories for your iPhone at the link in the description. Apple intelligence is expanding. We have more countries being supported. It is now supported in Danish, Dutch, Norwegian, Portuguese, uh, Swedish, Turkish, Chinese, traditional, and Vietnamese. Similarly, Apple has added more languages to live translation support on AirPods. These are now supported in Japanese, Korean, Italian, and Chinese, both traditional and simplified. So new languages for the translation on AirPods. Apple's bringing a new security feature with iOS 26.1. So again, from settings, we're going to go down to privacy and security, scroll all the way to the bottom. There's a new option for background security improvements. When we go into this, you can turn that off if you'd like, but basically these are gonna be the smaller security updates that are installed automatically between the major releases. So I'd highly recommend keeping that on. Uh, it lets you obviously know what you have installed now, but these are gonna come in between and they're kind of like rapid responses. So if there's a big security flaw that needs to get patched, these can be downloaded, installed automatically for you. And they're different from kind of the ones that are bringing new features. They're specifically focusing on security. Inside of the fitness or the workout app, we go down to the workout tab. Now, when you are logging a workout manually, there's a lot more options. So if I go ahead and hit tap and add workout, I can choose exactly what workout. You can add everything else that you need to add, like duration, estimated active calories, as well as effort. So before Apple would allow you to add workouts, but it's just much more robust with the rollout of 26.1. The biggest thing with this update though is just a ton of little refinements to the user interface and I'm going to walk you through a bunch of them because some of these are just really nice to have. So let's go ahead and walk through them and I'll compare them to what they looked like on the older phone as well. Starting out with timers and alarms. Now when you have a timer or an alarm being set and it goes off, we now have this option to, to slide to stop. Now that also happens for the alarm, so you can slide to turn off the alarm. Before it was just a big button that you could press and it was really easy to accidentally press like snooze or off. So now this gives people a lot more control over actually turning off those timers and alarms. I think that's a really nice change to the interface here after they changed it with iOS 26 in general. We have several kind of things that happen for liquid glass. Inside of the phone app, these new icons are much more liquid glassified. If you look at what it looked like on the older phone, it was much more kind of just kind of stock looking. Uh, so definitely more liquid glass like on the latest version of iOS 26 here in the phone app. Speaking of the phone app, if you go into settings, then apps, then phone, you can turn off haptics. I really like these. Uh, it actually vibrates onto your ear when a call is dropped or is hung up. So you actually know and you're not just talking to nobody, so I really like this. Similar when they answer the phone, you know that they've answered or the call has connected. So I love having these on, but if you don't like them, you can just now turn them off. I will say this is a little bit hard to see here on camera, but when you tap on any kind of buttons like the share sheet, there's a little like flash that kind of happens. It's a little bit like an HDR glow that happens behind those buttons. Apple has tuned this down with the release of 26.1. It was a little bit brighter on the older versions, and I think some people like this. Some people not, but a very, very small change to kind of that liquid glass UI. Inside of the Photos app, when you hold onto a photo, you'll now see there's quick options for share, favorite, and delete right there at the top. And the rest of the menu is below that. So if we look at what it looked like on the previous version, and I also held down on an image, you just had a long list there. So now Apple has made it a bit easier to see kind of everything all at once. I think those are gonna be your big sharing options, like your most used actions for share, favorite, and delete. And similarly, if we go and select a bunch of photos and tap on the share sheet there, we have options for all of those at the top. And once more, if we do that on the old device, selecting multiple photos, tapping that menu, you can see doesn't have those shortcuts at the top. So Apple just made it a little bit easier to get to the commonly used items from the Photos app.
By the way, while we're in photos, Apple now overlays the video bar there at the bottom. Before it was there, but there's kind of no backgrounds, a little bit harder to see. So Apple made that much easier to see with 26.1 here in the Photos app. Control Center is now much more bouncy. We pull this down from the top and you can see the whole UI bounces back, just more jelly-like, more liquid-like. Let's look at the old one for comparison. Here's my iPhone Air on 26.0.1. You can see it just kind of stops. It comes down, there's not a lot of momentum to it. Nothing stretches, there's a little momentum, but just not nearly the same as how it is on 26.1. When you're listening to music in the music app, you can see this here, I can now swipe on the songs to change them. So really nice way to swipe back and forth between tracks just by swiping on that little mini player at the bottom of the music app. In many places throughout the OS, Apple's now left aligning more things. Uh, in the old version, the icon, the title, and the description were all centered on pages inside of settings. You can see now they are all left aligned. The same thing applies to like folders too. The title there is aligned to the left before it was centered. Apple has made that a point to left align things with 26. So this just continues that trend. From control center, we can go in here and go into this. And when we select an external microphone, I can adjust the gain on that external microphone. So that's pretty handy. You can now adjust gain for external mics, the 26.1. Just relating to that a little bit, if we go down to settings, then general, and then local capture, this whole menu is now new, and it gives you these options for like where you wanna save your stuff to and audio only. So local capture was here in control center, but now we've added this extra menu into settings. Finally, Apple's added a little animation here when we're tapping on that album artwork, the clock nicely animates there to the top when you're playing music there on the lock screen, just making that look better with the release of 26.1. So that is it. That is everything new in iOS 26.1 for your iPhone. You can download it right now. Let me know if you spot any other changes down below in the comments. And as always, follow for more Apple news.